water. It's the great unknown. As soon as you leave the dock in the morning, what lies ahead for your day is as unpredictable as the weather. But that, that is exactly why you do it. It's a good pain. There's no doubt about it, you know, it's a good burn for sure. All right, we're gonna All right, rig we're up. on our way to our spot here. We've got eight or nine miles to go. We got some frigate birds overhead, and we got busting fish right in front of us. These are tough to run down. Gulp shrimp, baby. Tyler Capella knows saltwater. A full-time guide in Tampa, St. Pete, he spends most of his time chasing big redfish and tarpon. Jim Wilcox is one of the best inshore guides you'll find in the Florida Keys. Down here in Isla Mirada. The thrill of what's in the water is amplified only by what's happening above it. Hooked oh up. yeah, hooked, hooked up. up. Oh, it's a load of jacks. Look at double it. header, double header, baby. It was instant hits. I mean, we went out to this little wreck out there, it was eight miles offshore or something, and we caught just every species in the book you could possibly think of. Every cast, we're catching jacks, ladyfish. I had a huge cereal mackerel come up and smash my thing. Snapper everywhere. We caught a pompano. Uh, all kinds of grunts and you know, you never know what else and we were just, we were just loading down the live well with stuff that for, uh, for later on. Now, you know, when you're a fishing guide on TV and stuff like that, you get asked to wear a lot of clothes, so I decided to put on my snapper necktie this morning uh, down here in Isla Mirada, just for fun. That's why they call him a snapper, man. They're like That's snapper it, they will. They snap. They Look bite, at him. They don't let go. He's on there. He's Look at him. Yep. He's really on there. They don't like coming off. We're warmed up, man. It's kind of like warming up being in a bike race or something. Ready? Gotta ride Ready? A little bit. Our arms are blowing a little bit. Got the mojo going. Really good. Let's go get a big fish, man. All right, baby. He told me there were some big fish down here, so I got prepared. You know, I was pumping the weights the, the week before. All right, brother. Right off the support side. You got it. We're here. We roll up to this spot, and uh, it doesn't look like anything to me. He tells me there's some structure down there on the bottom. He tells me that there's a huge Goliath trooper down there. And I've caught some big Goliath trooper as well. We dropped a bait down and boom, immediately hooked up on about an 80, 90 pounder or so. It's a very short but high pressure fight. There's yeah, a big Goliath. There's the Goliath. We're baby. Not, not, allowed to, not allowed to bring him in the boat, but nope. we gotta pull him up like this That's to right. get the hook out. Possession. This is, you gotta grab this fish like your life depends on it. Glad these are connected. Because he to shakes me. so hard, he'll pull you right out. All right, baby, come on. There we there go. He goes. All right, free. We're gonna kiss him goodbye. Here he goes. Nice hundred pound Goliath to start the day. Try to eat my glove. See a big girl. There he goes. Or big guy. Right on, brother. Good job, man. Good job. All right. Nice. <laughs> Good work. Typically, a Goliath grouper is a great first big fish for somebody to catch. Because I can tighten down the drag, they pull hard, and I can anticipate whether they're gonna try and rock us up or not. Certain All spots right. we get rocked up right away, other spots they can't rock you up. Something big just picked up our Jack Creval back here. And then we dropped on a huge hunk of bait and uh, you know, get those little ones out of the way. And boom, get this big hit, the thing is staying down and I'm just pulling as hard as I can eventually pull up this big sea monster up into the boat. I mean, oh, it's a huge Goliath. Oh, oh baby. Captain Jim's not grabbing him by the lips. This Goliath grouper had a mouth on him like that. I mean, even, even bigger. And uh, he's said he was about 250 pounds. He's a pretty solid one. You, know, you don't see those every day. There's Mr. Actually, Goliath actually, we're able to get the, get the cutters and cut that. Here he goes. He's going to go. I can only lift him so much and stay legal. All right, here we go. See you, big girl. Get down there. That's all I can hang on, brother. Woo! Yeah, baby. That was good. Big Goliath, Tough. brother. Big teeth. Good. All right. Nice job. All right, boys. That was a real deal there, boys. What? That is like battling a monster. That is a monster. All right, I'm not sure who won. <laughs> got everything? Got all your fingers? I got it. I'm good. All right, cool. Not a bad way to start the day. This is North American Fisherman. 
North American Fisherman is brought to you by Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. By Triley, Angler's Trust, Berkeley Triley, Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. And by Abu Garcia for life. Fishing with somebody that knows what's going on, you don't miss much and uh, it's really cool because then you maximize your trip, you maximize the fishing potential and that's what it's all about. There are a lot of backwater guides in the Florida Keys and then there's Captain Jim Wilcox. As passionate as he is about the catch, his efforts in preserving those same fish have him on the leading edge of area research. Jim works with the University of Florida on the Sawfish Project, tagging and following these prehistoric monsters to acquire information on where they live and travel. The sawfish is just one of the species that gets tagged in the Keys for research, and the data received is vital to the conservation of the Keys. You know, we, we catch these big goliaths in our first spot, which is great. We got the skunk out, I'm warmed up, and, and uh, he tells me we're gonna go to another spot and drop down and see what happens. You never know what's gonna happen down here, so. We got a nibble. Sorry, Clicker starts going, the line starts screaming. I pick the rod up, and boom, this thing starts running and heading towards Mexico. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Oh, he's really shaking his head out there, guys. The old Penn Center is getting a workout today. It is a lemon. Oh, let's see, he's get, got a tag let's in see it. We get, well, let's see if we can get that tag out. All right, now the interesting thing about these tags is the, the type on there is like a quarter size of newspaper print. They want you to, they think you're gonna read it from the boat, okay? This guy's <laughs> completely grassed up. Yeah. All right, there's only one thing we can do and that's try and pull it out and get a look at it. But this is not the safest situation in the world yeah, either. Yeah, these lemon sharks are very... Uh, They're the meanest ones at the boat, no doubt about you know, it. Jim actually reached down there with his bare hand and pulled the tag out of this thing. I was like, whoa, because these things can actually turn around and bite their own tail. Woo, got yeah, it, got, got the, the tag, tag, baby. Got nice. the tag, there we go. We'll clean that up later and find out where clean it came it up, from. See where he is, see where he All was right. tagged. That was good life-threatening maneuver. <laughs> see you, baby. All right, good job, boys. Good job, brother. Nice. Got some good... Uh... That, that was interesting. The sleeve portion came right off the tag. The mono actually stayed in them, but I got the important part. The good part. part, that's good, okay. Nice. Right. Well, the interesting thing, in the spring this year, in an area where we, where we usually catch tarpon, sawfish, goliath groovers, we're usually plagued by lemon sharks. This year in the spring, they just didn't show up. And we were all concerned what happened, you know, maybe something happened to them, the long liners got them, we didn't know. But all of a sudden, later in the year, there's lemon sharks everywhere, and a lot of them have tags. And the reason they tag them is they try and track them, because these sharks definitely travel up and down the coast, following the bait and following the climate. Big lemon. Whoa, monster, Big. monster he's, he's lemon got a tag. with another tag. Oh, I got to do this twice. This is sick. That's a huge lemon shark. Huge lemon with another tag. Got, got it. it. Nice work, man. Another tag. Another tag. What are the odds of that? Two, a two for two, baby. How often do you get tagged lemon sharks down here? Uh, you know, not that often. I mean, maybe at, you know, 10 or 12 a year I can catch tagged fish. Wow. All right, swing the rod to me, brother. Here we go. Let's say goodbye. There we go. Perfect. Nice job. Yeah, man. Right on. Yeah, right on. Good job. Tag number two. Sure. Good job. Whew. Wear me out, man. Yep. I'm going to give them a call here. Captain Jim and Tyler called in the info on the tags, which unbelievably had consecutive tag numbers. They found out both fish had been tagged close to their location a year ago. Not surprising, as it is common for lemon sharks to travel in schools of the same size and return to the same area year after year. Both fish had grown over a foot since being tagged a year ago. You know, we caught all these awesome sharks and, you know, in the, in the Goliath group as well, which was great. But, uh, you know, we wanted, he wanted to go get something silver. You know, he wanted, he actually wanted to go chase after the Silver King. So after all, we're in Isla Mirada. This is the sporting capital of the world. And the most sporting fish around here, as far as I'm concerned, is the tarpon. Oh, it's oh, a tarpon! Tarpon, tarpon! Get tight, get tight, stay tight. Point the rod at him, point the rod at him with Tarpon on, baby! There we go, here we go! Dude, Isla Mirada is crazy. Huh? How many different kinds oh of things? Oh my god, have? are you kidding? What you got, baby? There you are. It's a nice little 80 pounder. Woo! There he goes. That's what tarpon fishing is all about. Yes, sir. Look at him. That's a fun size one right there. It doesn't yep. beat you down, they jump a lot. Get him. Look how fast they are. I think he's hard to say. 
Oh yeah, He's so nice right, job. Right in the back of the clipper there. Oh, look at that beautiful creature right there. Sir! There he goes. He's free. Nice job. Yeah, tarpon fishing. All right, what do we, fish. man, that's just awesome, Jim. Good job. This day, as Jim said it would be, was just loaded down with huge fish. Marata in the Florida Keys has earned its name as a sport fishing capital of the world. From the mystery of the blue water to all there is to see in the backcountry, Isla Marata has it all. I'm Laura Shera and this is North American Fisherman Clubhouse. Whatever fish you're chasing here, the key is having gear that'll hold up. Fighting fish this size is the ultimate test of a rod and reel. In battling huge goliath grouper and sharks, Captain Jim Wilcox breaks out the Penn International with a seven foot heavy Shakespeare rod. Big gear for big fish. To get the latest on the best gear and when to use it, check out the North American Fishing Club. It's designed by anglers for anglers. If you fish, this is the place to be. Members of the NAFC can field test gear through our new Stuff Stuff program and get access to exclusive deals. Now there is a free and easy way to jump on board. Just log on to fishingclub.com backslash free magazine and sign up for your free subscription to the online edition of North American Fisherman Magazine. North American Fisherman is offering you a chance to fish with our guys. Wow, what a fish. Hey, I'm Eric Cotty with North American Fisherman. Do you want to come up here and fish with me? No, no, no. Hold on one second there. I'm Captain Tyler Capella. If you actually want to catch some trophy fish, you got to come down to sunny Florida and fish with me. How about a huge smoker kingfish like this monster? You can sign up at North American Fisherman's Facebook page, or you can go to fishingclub.com to sign up for a contest to fish with myself or Tyler Capella. Plus, everything is included. Hotels, flights, and a chance to see this. Hey, it's up to you. All you have to do is enter. Go to fishingclub.com or like us on Facebook for your chance to win. Coming up, what's lurking beneath the surface that threatens to destroy the water you fish? Find out on Silent Invaders, up next. Always a beautiful day on the lake. It is gorgeous. Larry Squillis is a retired dentist. He moved from the city to the far reaches of northern Minnesota because of its pristine lakes. These days, instead of protecting teeth from invasive cavities, he's inspecting lakes from invasive species. I don't see any spinies. No, I don't see any spiny water flea. Larry is one of 20 members of the White Iron Chain of Lakes Association who volunteer their time to test the water quality of area lakes and look for signs of aquatic invaders. We need to protect these waters, that they won't stay the same unless people do something about it. This time out, they're searching for evidence of spiny water fleas. This microscopic insect actually competes with small fish by gobbling up zooplankton, the fish's main food supply. The spiny water flea will impact the food web and also ultimately the fishing because it does have a tendency to shift the regime in a lake. It affects the fishing, it also affects the property value of their property and they are all property owners. So far there is no evidence of spiny water fleas here, but a lake that is infested is dangerously close by and that's got everyone worried. Spiny water flea, I, it, it kind of scares me because it's so easy to transmit. I've come to realize that uh, we need to make people aware of the importance of inspecting their equipment. You know, drain off the water, drain the water out of their boats, out of their bilges, uh, changing their, their bait bucket water, and if they would also um, let everything dry. Because once they're there, you can't do anything about them, very, very little. Uh, they're here to stay. The integral part that boaters and anglers play in this continuing saga is all part of the never-ending battle with the silent invaders. This is North American Fisherman's Field Test, powered by Stuff Stuff. Everything you see here has been tested and approved by members of the North American Fishing Club. 
If you want the latest in new gear, this is information you can trust. First up is my Topo Lake Depth Map Overlay. It's a unique and functional tool that allows you to create a map of your favorite lake. First, you take an aerial photo of your favorite lake and then add depth and contours to create a navigational map. Club member Brad Remmer says he loves these. It saves him tons of time on the boat when he's out there all summer long. Next up is the Belize Bifocal Polarized Sunglasses by Havervision. The best part about these is that the bifocals can be ordered on the top or the bottom of the sunglasses. Club member John Raines said these sunglasses are perfectly comfortable and have amazing clarity. To learn more about these products or to have your gear field tested, join me at fishingclub.com. Field test, powered by Sunglasses. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Berkeley Gulf, alive, looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. And by Hobie Fishing, powered by Mirage Drive. Next up, Knot Wars, and we head back to the Gulf for more blue water action. Triple tail is a fish that we generally target on lobster trap buoys or stone crab buoys. Well, we were in Everglades National Park. There's no commercial fishing allowed in there, so we rarely see them on the top. Triple tail on! Yeah! When North American Fisherman returns. Welcome to Knot Wars. We are in the midst of a great line-to-line -line knot competition. Again, this is Knot Wars Light because we're using a six pound fire line as our main line and a six pound 100% fluorocarbon and eight pound Trilene XT as our leader material. Now for the past two weeks, the Uni to Uni Knot has been our winner and it's ready to face another challenger. This week's challenger is the J Knot. Now to bring you up to speed, let's show you how to tie each of these knots. First, the Uni to Uni Knot. Overlap the end of the leader material and main line about six inches. Take the tag end of the main line and bring it toward the middle, forming a loop. Then using the same tag end, make six to eight turns through the loop and tighten by pulling on the tag end. Repeat steps two and three with the end of the leader material. After moistening, pull the standing lines in opposite directions to slide the knots together. So there it is, the uni to uni knot. Now let's show you how to tie its challenger, the J knot. Run the leader parallel to the main line for several inches and tie a simple overhand knot with a doubled line to form a loop. Next, run the tag end of the main line and one end of the leader around the bottom of the loop and up through the center. Repeat the process twice more as shown. Moisten and tighten carefully. And there's the challenger, the J knot. Now it's kind of a convoluted knot to tie, but with a little practice, you'll get it. And it looks like a really strong knot, so let's find out. Here we are at the Berkeley Knot War Machine. We're ready to go. With the uni to uni knot here on the right, it's going into week number three. It's challenger, the J knot. Will the uni to uni three, Pete? We're gonna find out. Oh, after three weeks in the competition, the uni to uni knot finally goes down to the J knot. Now we liked this J knot from the beginning. We knew it looked like a strong knot, and guess what? It is a strong knot. And it tested well on every type of line we put it on. Now guess what? That means that the J knot is moving on to next week, the last week, the championship week, because we're gonna crown the line to line knot champion. Will it be the J knot, or will it be its challenger, the modified Albright? Now to learn how to tie either one of these knots, just head on over to our website, fishingclub.com. Or better yet, download the Knot Wars app on your smartphone. Knot Wars, because no good fish story ends with a broken knot. Isla Morada in the Florida Keys features access to four bodies of water. Florida Bay, the Everglades National Park, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Gulf of Mexico. Everything down here is about the water, from the resorts to the world-famous marinas. Add it up and it's easy to see why they call this place the sport fishing capital of the world. In this unique ecosystem, nearly any fish that swims in salt water can be caught down here. Well, the big thing that people need to understand when they come to the Keys is that this isn't a place where you can go walk four miles on the beach in the morning and, and jog on the beach. 
Uh, the islands are a lot smaller than people think. Uh, they're made out of coral. It's an ancient coral reef. Uh, so swimming in beaches is not really our forte, but snorkeling, diving, and fishing, and boating is really what it's all about. If you like those things, it's a great place to come and visit. Fish are all about the habitat. There's so much uh, good quality habitat down here. I was so stoked to just come down here and be able to fish in those areas and experience what the Keens are all about. We caught a lot of fish. Tyler's got to be worn out. He's a lot younger than me, so it's a good thing he was doing all the cranking, okay? We've probably caught 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of fish today. We're on the way home. We're all, the gear's packed up. We got the rods tied down. Everybody's happy. We're lined up. We're bombing back across the bay. All of a sudden, I come across a weed clump. There's about a seven pound triple tail under this pile of weeds. All right, brother, we're going to spin around, put a live crab on here, and we're going to get him. Let's go. All right. Triple tail is a fish that we generally target on lobster trap buoys or stone crab buoys. Well, we were in Everglades National Park. There's no commercial fishing allowed in there, so we rarely see them on the top. Triple tail on. Yeah! Look at triple that triple tail, tail on. on the crab. Yeah. Sick. Look at that. Nice Ooh, spot on that triple cast, tail, brother. Jim. That's an awesome cast, my Look man. That. That's a nice triple tail, too. Okay. Triple tail is another prehistoric fish. This is like prehistoric fish week, okay? We've been catching sharks, which haven't changed that much. We've been catching goliath groupers that haven't changed that much. These things, they look just prehistoric. Do you want to release him in the name of science? Or? Oh, Hell, I'm Murata, buddy. Good spot on that. A little more teamwork, brother. That, that was awesome. sick. Nice job. All right. Triple tail! Awesome. You know, Isla Mirada, oh, you never know what you're going to see, and that's a testament. A live crab! On a live crab! We caught so many fish, I was so sore from the day just catching, you know, 3,000 pounds of fish or whatever it was. But I'll tell you what, it was all worth it. You know, I'll, I'll, it's a good pain. There's no doubt about it, you know, it's a good burn for sure.